The Super Junior Tag League is over. Plus, we have not yet talked about the big show in Los Angeles, which saw the return of a former IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. And we do finally have news about the other former champion uh, and some going ons, what's coming up. And um, unfortunately, we're not getting a match that we really wanted. And now there's a mystery match hanging out there that we're not sure what it's going to be. (laughs) But overall, um, the Super Junior Tag League was relatively uneventful, I think. The there was only six teams. Two of them didn't even compete in the last night. One of them couldn't compete on the last two nights because of COVID exposure, so they were pulled from the show. So uh this is probably <laughs> a uh yeah, it, it happened. That's about it. Yeah, um, so, like, I don't think any match in this tournament was bad. Like, they were all pretty good, kind of good. But, like, there's, if, if you didn't watch any of these, like, there there's only, like, one thing that you missed that's an angle after the next to the last night. That is pretty much it. That That's the best yeah. we can say. There was a big angle near the end of the tournament, and that was pretty much it. If, if you like New Japan and you just like watching these shows because it's, you know, nice to have in the background and there's nothing bad, there's going to be some pretty good matches, there was nothing wrong with this. Right. All right. So um, let's uh, kind of take this a little backwards. Let's uh, let's finish up the tag league and then we'll pop back to resurgence because that's the yeah. the newsworthy yeah. thing. So we're going to jump up to August 16th, 2021, and it's in Kurikan Hall in Tokyo. And we kick off the tournament pl- action with El Fantasmo and Taiji Ishimori taking on Robbie Eagles and Tiger Mask. Uh the 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 team of Robbie Eagles and Tiger Mask have been doing quite well throughout this uh, whole thing. So uh, it was a fun team to see. They are calling themselves Flying Tiger, I guess is the name that's been applied to them. Yes. So we start off with some chain wrestling between ELP and Eagles. Eagles uh, hit some kicks, tags in Tiger Mask, and Ishimori wants to come in. Uh, so Tiger or tries to come in. So Tiger Mask and Eagles take care of both ELP and Ishimori. They all brawl on the outside. Ishimori does the back rake to Tiger Mask. ELP does one. We get the double ball stand in the corner in the Tree of Woe. Uh, Tiger Mask finally gets a tag out to Eagles. He runs wild. Bunch of kicks, impact moves, double knees to the chest, leg sweep, double knees to the face to ELP for a two count. Uh, Eagles starts to go after the leg. They exchange forearms. Then they start exchanging some kicks. Eagles hits a drop kick to the knee. Can't get on the Ron Miller special. Hits a standing slice bread. ELP blocks a regular slice bread and hits the burning hammer. And both guys tag out. Ishimori hits a double knees in the corner and the Blastifa kick for a two count goes into the yes lock and Ishimori and Tiger Mask fight uh, up onto the top rope. Uh, Eagles takes out ELP and Tiger Mask hits a super, uh, I guess I get uh, underhook, underhook superplex for a two count. Uh, he hits yeah. a Tiger Driver for a two count and then Tiger Mask gets on an arm bar. Ishimori gets to the ropes. Ishimori hits a double drop knees to the uh, double drop knee gut buster for two. Tiger Mask hits a tombstone. ELP pulls Eagles out. And then ELP hits sudden death to Tiger Mask. Eagles breaks up the pin. And then ELP takes out Eagles. And Ishimori puts on the bone lock. And the ref has to call a stop to the match because Tiger Mask was already out from the sudden death loaded boot shot. So uh, he was out. Ref called the match and uh, ELP and Taiji Ishimori win this one to uh, I think they are tied at this point. Yeah, something like that. Yep. Um, I, I liked the finish. 
I would have liked it so much more. Like, I thought for a second that they were going to do this, and, and it would have been the best. If, like, a ELP, uh, or a ELP hit the, the uh, loaded super kick, and then uh, Robbie saved, and ELP and Robbie went out of the ring, I would have loved if instead of putting on the bone lock, and Shimori had just covered Tiger again and pinned him. That would have been better. Out. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I like the uh, the finish they did in their following match the next night. No, that, that was a fun finish for the finals, but we'll get to that. Yes, yes. Um, then we move on to Yoshinobu Kanemaru and El Desperado versus Sho and Yo. Yo has been having issues throughout this entire tournament, and he's pretty much lo- he's lost every fall for the team. Uh, we have Sho and Yo attacking right when they step foot into the ring. And Yo fights with Desperado on the outside. Sho and Kenamaro started off on the ring. Uh, Desperado tosses the barricade outside. Sho and Yo can't get very far with Kenamaro as Desperado pulls Sho out, works him over on the outside. Uh, then we have Yo gets a uh, run into the ring post on the outside by Kenamaro. They work over Sho in the ring for a bit. Sho buries a knee in the stomach to get a tag out to Yo. And Yo puts down both Kenamaro and Desperado. Yo goes up top. Kenamaro pushes him off. Desperado throws Yo uh, to the outside, throws him into the barricade, crotches him on the post, racks the knee against the post a couple times. So going after that uh, repaired knee. It was actually not the repaired knee that they were attacking, which is kind of funny. Um, more attacks to the leg. A drop kick to the knee. Ketamaro works a single leg crab. Uh, Sho has to break it up. They attack Sho's knee. Uh, he rolls out of the ring. Desperado throws him into the barricade. Ketamaro keeps working Yo's knee in the ring. Desperado works Yo's knee when he gets tagged in. And Yo doesn't make a tag when he had a chance to. Uh, but he does manage to make some space to get a tag in the end. Uh, Sho hits a massive mid kick to Katamaro, drops him for a two count, works a Kimura. Uh, Katamaro hits a satellite DDT and then puts on the figure four. Sho gets to the ropes to get out of that. We have double tags out here. So Desperado back to the knee of Yo. Yo goes up top, hits a missile drop kick, a little bit of back and forth. Desperado hits a drop kick to the knee and then a dragon screw. Desperado puts on numero dos. Yo desperately makes it to the rope. Uh, we get a double knee from Sho and Yo and to Desperado. They try for uh, the double team neck breaker, but Yo, his knees are so shot he can't even hit the ropes. Uh, Sho gets tossed to the outside, and then uh, two more shots to the knee. Desperado puts on numero dos, traps the arm. Sho uh, runs into the ring and decides to not bre- not to break up the submission. He steps out of the ring, jumps off the apron, stands on the outside. Yo makes it to the ropes. Uh, we get a drop kick uh, suplex combo to Yo. Kataro de Angel, Yo kicks out, Pinche Loco, Sho does nothing, Desperado pins Yo, and they pick up the win. Yeah, I was just sad the whole time watching this because I knew what was coming. Rapongi <laughs> through K never managed to get anything going. It, it was, I don't know. <laughs> it was a mix of like kind of neat and kind of confusing. But I, 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 I kind of liked the way that. It's gonna sound weird. I liked the way that Yo's knee gave out. <laughs> In the context of the story of the match, I liked the way that his knee gave out. <laughs> um, the, and it was interesting because you know he did that, but then he still survived. He got the ropes for Numero Dos. He kicked out of the Guitar de la Angel, and. The, Finally fell to the Pidgey Loco. So the the thing was that, like, with the story that they had been telling, you can understand Show's frustration. You kind, you kind of get the point that uh, we're near the end of the team. But when it came down to it at the moment, Show gave up on Yo before Yo was beat. Yes. 
What does Katara mean? Um, does it not mean guitar? I don't think so, because then that would mean that would be the angel guitar. <laughs> so I'm not I actually sure. think that I uh, well, just knowing like what, because I think when he first came back as Desperado before he joined Suzuki Goon. Didn't he have, like, a guitar for a minute as part of the gimmick? I am not sure. Yeah, I think so. So, I actually, I have always just assumed, and, you know, my Spanish is low to moderate, but, yeah, I, I've just always thought that it was the guitar of the angels. Well, there you go, then. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so then uh, Desperado and Katamaro, they roll out of the ring, and uh, Sho gets into the ring and helps Yo to his feet, and then hits Yo with the shock arrow and leaves him laying, and that is it. Uh, sad. The end of a, of a wonderful, beloved junior heavyweight tag team. So, uh, uh, oh, uh, oh, okay. It's 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 a G on. I thought it was a K. I thought it was Katara, Katara, not Gatara. Yeah. Okay, that makes way more sense because Jay just put it in. So, <laughs> Gatara is Spanish for guitar. If I knew it, if I knew that's what he was saying, I thought it was K. I thought it was like Katara. <laughs> See, J Jay is always there to, to save us. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Jay is good people. Anyways. Um, <laughs> yeah, but... So, the I think the question mark here is... Uh, uh, what does this mean for show? And if, what I just remember, like... And I, I wish I'd followed the story more, but like... You know, the deal is they're making fun about uh, uh, Goto going to bed early. And <laughs> it's like the next day... It was like he tweeted something, like he had just woken up and saw that show turned on Yo and was like, what the fuck? <laughs> but anyway, um, so the next day when they when they had the different opening VTR, you probably don't even watch it, you should probably just skip right past them. It's been the same one the whole tour except for that show. And it says, like, you know, it, it shows the name and then it'll have their little faction logo, so it still shows Yo Chaos. And then it shows show and nothing, so presumably, like it's, it's uh, show has quit chaos or got kicked so, out. Well, uh, yeah, well, maybe at the at the same time because, and that's a little like, <laughs> it's it's more than him just turning on yo then, right? It's uh, so I don't know. People saying uh, maybe Suzuki Goon. People saying maybe the United Empire. I don't know. I'd see him uh, fit in with Suzuki Goon, not too bad. Yeah, because he kind of does the uh, the the you know some of the UWF style stuff. He's been in in Gleet. Um. Oh, one thing. Uh, show is pretty great at doing the crazy eyes. <laughs> yeah. When, when, when he turned, yeah, that was that was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, so we'll move on to the following night. So this is the final night of the Junior Tag League. We kick it off with Tiger Mask and Robbie Eagles versus Ryusuke Taguchi and Master Wado. This is do or die for Tiger Mask and Eagles. They have to win this match to uh, have a chance of winning the tournament. Wado and Eagle started off with some chain wrestling. Tiger Mask and Taguchi tag in, and Tiger Mask literally kicks Taguchi's ass. Uh, yeah. Wado tries to yeah. run in, but the Flying Tigers take him out, and then they both double team kick Taguchi's ass some more. <laughs> Taguchi takes a lot of punishment, uh, but he does hit a blue thunder bomb to get a tag out to Wado. And then Eagles and Wado exchange a bunch of strikes and kicks. Wado gets the upper hand, tags into Gucci. He works over Eagles a little, puts on the ankle lock. Um, Eagles actually reverses out of a ankle lock using a standing slice of bread. 
gets the tag out to Tiger Mask, and then Taguchi hits uh, B triggers to both of them, both Eagles and Tiger Mask. So he gets the upper hand. Uh, a flying leg lariat, which should was supposed to be a flying hip attack, but he was so far <laughs> off target, he just kind of tossed his leg out there to get something to Tiger Mask for a two count. Uh, Tiger Mask makes a comeback. Eagles takes out Watto. Tiger Mask hits the butterfly superplex. And then uh, Tiger Mask comes up short with a flying headbutt because he wasn't anywhere in the ballpark to get hitting a splash. Yeah, I, I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt and assumed that it was supposed to be a headbutt. Okay, because <laughs> I'm like, he, he wasn't even the ball, in the ballpark to trying to hit a splash. Um, Taguchi hits the Bomaye for a two. Uh, guys flying all over the place. Tiger Mask blocks a Dodon, hits a Tiger Driver for a two count, and then Taguchi. Ends up snagging uh, the pinfall with a clutch pin, and they spoil it for Flying Tiger. They did. Um, so, <laughs> Eagles and Tiger Mask working to Gucci's ass. That <laughs> so like it early, early this week or last week there was a got into a discussion that uh, started with Aria Davari posting about uh, he did this move in the Indies called the Magic Carpet Ride. And I guess in WWE developmental at some point, but Bill DeMott said, we don't do that indie bullshit here. And then that led to Kyle Matthews chiming in, who, who had been uh, talking about when Kenny Omega was in uh, WWE developmental in Deep South. And Bill DeMott told him, it don't do all that bullshit, it work a body part. So Kenny went out and did a match where he worked the, worked the guy's ass the whole <laughs> match and then won. An atomic drop. <laughs> this reminded me of that because that story was in my head last week. Right. Just another the Kenny Omega's a legend. At the uh, beginning this- of the match, it was funny because Eagles and Tiger Mask wanted the ref to make sure Taguchi didn't have a loaded ass. <laughs> yeah. And then he starts about- like undoing the front of his pants, and everybody's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Knowing how the standings needed to work out going into the main event, I figured that that six or nine was going to catch one on Tiger, and that was what happened. This was, you know. Uh, Post match, we had a little bit of a stare down between Eagles and Hiromu, who was on commentary. Yeah. So I'm guessing that's probably the next match for them. Yeah, that's uh, the match for the uh, Seipu Dome. Okay, cool. I thought it was. I just didn't have it in front of me to make sure. Uh, So we move to the final match of the evening. It comes down to these two teams, winner take all pretty much. So we have El Desperado Yoshinobu Kenemaru versus Taiji Ishimori El Phantasmo. Uh, Desperado and Kenemaru attack before the bell. Of course, doing this means the ref didn't check ELP's boot. ELP and Ishimori take some punishment. Ishimori gets worked over by uh, Suzuki-gun. Uh, Ishimori hits the blast of a kick, gets a tag to ELP. ELP hits a lion salt for two, dive out onto Espera- Desperado on the outside, then back in for a springboard swanton for two. ELP rakes the back, a few strikes to Ke- uh, Kenamaro for two, uh, hits a delayed vertical suplex for two. Uh, then Kenamaro fights off a double team. Uh, ELP pulls Desperado off the apron, though, so Kenamaro cannot make the tag. Kenamaro gets stuck in the tree of woe, eats a sliding drop kick, and then the double ball stand. Kenamaro hits a drop kick to the knee of ELP to get the tag to Desperado, and he drops ELP and knocks Ishimori off the apron, hits ELP with a spear for a two count. They have a striking exchange. Desperado ducks a sudden death attempt and hits a spine buster for a two. Ishimori tags in. Uh, uh, double knees, works the arm, hits a shoulder breaker. Ishimori hits a La Mystica right into the yes lock. Uh, Ishimori tries to roll back to the middle. Desperado puts on numero dos out of the roll. I thought that was a pretty cool counter right there. Uh, Ishimori powers out. Desperado hits a back suplex, tags in Kenamaro. He works on Ishimori's knee, 
Desperado takes out ELP and Kanemaru puts on the figure four. ELP gets away from Desperado, hits a Thunder Kiss 86 on Kanemaru to break up the hold. Uh, we get the flying knee UFO combo from ELP and Ishimori. Ishimori hits the hold down cold breaker and ELP goes for the moonsault, but Kanemaru moves out of the way and ELP ends up moonsaulting his partner. Uh, we get some double team from El Desperado and Kenomaru. We get a moonsault from Kenomaru for a two. ELP fights out of some double team. And then ELP hits a back kick to the gut of Kenomaru. And he keels over in pain like he just got shot. Desperado hits a punch that drops ELP, though neither men are legal. ELP stomps on the foot, which hurts Desperado's foot. Hits sudden death. He, he gets knocked out. ELP wants Ishimori to pin Desperado, but the ref for yay red shoes for once knows what's going on and realizes, wait, that's not the legal man. So ELP starts arguing the ref. Kenomaru gives Ishimori a low blow and rolls him up and gets the pinfall victory. So Kenamaro and Desperado win the Super Junior Tag League for this year. I feel like I've seen uh, these two teams wrestle like, I don't know, a dozen times. Yes, in the it past feels year like a so. lot. And uh, of all of the matches that I have seen between these two teams, uh, this was certainly the most recent. <laughs> um, <laughs> we talked about... I did very much like the finish, and ELP being so mad. Not not that Red Shoes screwed up, but the, the one time Red Shoes does something right, it screws them over. Uh, after the match in the back, uh, ELP is talking about how they're taking the belts to the United States and they want the best junior heavyweight teams out there. So I was thinking about that. And uh, number one, I, I really, uh, I, and I assume that this match is going to set up uh, uh, this match again at the, uh, probably at the the uh, Seibu Dome, mm -hmm. one of those cards. And uh, so I hope that uh, Ishimori and ELP retain because that means they will be bringing the junior tag belts to Dallas. And I would, I would like to see that. And I was thinking about, uh, kind of some of the teams available and the one that jumps into my head is that and I think they may have only teamed like once or twice but uh, Rocky Romero and Leo Rush or fucking somebody in Leo Rush I, I, I want Leo Rush in the mix with the New Japan Juniors well uh, for both of the shows at the MetLife Dome um they have not announced the tag match for the junior titles, so I am not sure if they will be defended. Yeah, and I, I, I'm just presuming, and we'll see. But yeah, uh, uh, good for good for Despi and Kenamaru finally getting the the Super Junior Tag League win. Mm -hmm. uh, then we we're gonna go backwards in time to August 14th, so a week ago, and this is the. Uh, resurgent show at the torch at the LA Coliseum in Los Angeles. And uh, we kick off the night with Carl Fredericks and Alec Coughlin. Uh, I didn't write much for the first like three openers. Uh, Fredericks hits the manifest destiny to win it here. Uh, it was a decent little match. Not much. Yeah. To uh, yeah. So, uh, Kevin Kelly said during the match, uh, the proof is in the pudding when it comes to the quality of training in the new Japan dojo system. Yes. And I'm just thinking about uh, so uh, an interview with uh, WWE executive Nick Khan just dropped today where he talked about how they're uh, screwing up developmental to make more cookie cutter crappy wrestlers. That's not what he said, but that's what he meant. Tony <laughs> Khan said that. Nick yeah. Khan did not see that. What? <laughs> yeah. Different the, people. Nick Khan was saying that without saying it. Oh, and okay, then yes. Khan, then Tony Khan said, uh, pro wrestling is art, and you do not make great artists by teaching them all to paint by numbers the same way. <laughs> yes. So, a little tie in there. Yeah. Uh, all, uh, uh, Matt Morris, uh, the former uh, Aiden English, said something about taking one of Coughlin's challenges, and then he, in fact he did at the, the Strong Tapings two days later, so... You know, uh, 
But yeah, this is Coughlin's sort of challenge series. He's like he was, you know, behind uh, Fredericks and Clark Connors, but obviously he's really fucking good. He's ready to graduate, so yeah, hopefully they're uh, moving toward that soon. Uh, but the visual, because the visual, it, like, I don't know how to explain it. They were outdoors, and it was at, like, it was just a really cool visual at the, the torch at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. So see, if you look at uh, my, my new... Uh, their header since last week, the visual of, of Tanahashi with the U.S. title, and you can see the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum and the Olympic rings in the background. Mm-hmm. Old visuals on this show. Uh, then we had Red Narita, TJP, Clark Connors versus Rocky Romero, Wheeler Yuta, and Fred Rosser. This was uh, going everywhere. Connors pins Rocky after some help from TJP. Yeah, they are uh, Clark Connors and DJP. They've been a tag team before. They're kind of a regular tag team. Uh, mentioned that that TJP is is also about to become a father uh, for the sake of the child. I hope that his partner is not a dumbass anti vaxxer moron. <laughs> anyway, uh, so they are building a Fred Rosser Ren Narita singles match uh, that was also taped on Monday and. Yeah, I am very, very looking forward to that. But yeah, this was a very fun trios match. Uh, then we had a 10-man. It was Danny Limelight, uh, Jorel Nelson, J.R. Kratos, Tom Lawler, and Hoist Isaacs versus Yuya Uemura, Leo Rush, Adrian Quest, Fred Yehai, and Chris Dickinson. Uh, this match was just craziness everywhere. Even if I yep. wanted to write down what happened, I wouldn't be able to because there was so much crap going on. Uh, but Yuya Uemura got the pin over Danny Limelight with a the double underhook suplex after Leo Rush hit a stunner. Yes. Uh, I, I will read my entire review of this match. I wrote uh, Yuya and a heart emoji. <laughs> Well, there yeah, you go. Uh, uh, yeah, so Yuyo uh, pinned Danny Limelight with uh, Kaneki, and then he gets on the mic, and he, I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was, you know, hello, I'm here in the USA. And then he said, he calls out Katsuyori Shibata. He wants to train with Katsuyori Shibata, and Shibata comes out and says, what is his new catchphrase, I guess? Come with me! And he gives... Uh, Yuya and LA Dojo shirt and Yuya tosses his his uh, uh, his uh, no gay dojo shirt just away into the crowd or something and so Yuya's excursion is going to be at the LA Dojo under Shibata and by god the thought of like how awesome Yuya Umura is going to be after he trains with Shibata for like a year holy shit that guy when he comes back from excursion like, he's not going to be a great Okan or a Master Wado. He's going to be an Okado or a Hiromu. Yes, definitely. Um, well, he's much heavier. He's much bigger than Hiromu, so yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I just meant in terms of, like, a guy who's going to come in and has charisma and a character. And- yeah, and has a really good sense of wrestling. I mean... Those matches, basically that round robin, the three of them during the G1 yeah. last year, those are great to watch every every one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, what are we going to do for the undercard of the G1 this year? I'm going to uh, miss that. I know. <laughs> well, they're going to have to bring in some new young lions, I guess. Yeah. I have a spider walking. Her- That's a moth. Oh. I have a moth on the inside of the glass of my computer. Flying around what? inside my computer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so we move on to Hikaleo versus Juice Robinson. Uh, Juice has to work hard to deal with the power of Hikaleo, who is like a foot taller than Juice. And Juice is a pretty tall guy already, so. <laughs> Did you remember, because I, I don't think that you and I reviewed the show, when, after, when Lance Archer beat uh, Moxley for the U.S. title, and then he had the, the stare down with Hikaleo, and like, Jim Ross's reaction, like, I have never heard a man get an erection. (laughs) 
holy shit. When he saw how freaking tall this guy... Because he was, like, noticeably taller than Lance Archer, who was pretty freaking tall. Yeah, he's probably, like, yeah, three that, inches taller than Lance Archer. But, yeah, I, I, I just had to bring that up because we hadn't got to mention it. Uh, both guys talk trash to each other. Juice has to use Hikaleo's size against him. He low bridges Hikaleo to get him on to the outside of the ring. Crossbody to the floor, but then Hikaleo runs Juice into the post, drops him on the barricade. Uh, they fight a bunch on the outside. Back in the ring, Hikaleo hits a vertical suplex for a two. Juice gets beat up a bit. Juice actually hits Hikaleo with a power bomb, uh, hits a cannonball, a left hand of God, and then a lariat. But Hikaleo pops right back up onto his feet. Uh, uh, and then Juice manages to take advantage, and he rolls through a Tongan driller to get the pin over the bigger man. So Juice Robinson picks up the win here, and um, Hikaleo beat the crap out of Juice after the match was over, yelling, this ain't over. <laughs> yeah, so they had a match. It was fine. I was feeling like Hikaleo should get a big win, but that would have broken the New Japan hierarchy, which uh, Gato rarely does outside of tournaments. But if you're going to have him lay the guy out to get his heat back after the match, just have him win so you don't cool his heat in the first place. Uh, then we move on to one of the, my more anticipated matches. Moose versus Tomohiro Ishii. And Moose is like a foot and a half taller than Ishii. <laughs> yes. And this match was awesome. <laughs> yes. They, I could basically uh, sum it down to they beat the crap out of each other and then one of them won. <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this match uh, was far more never than the never title match that was on the show. So they throw hands, they run into each other a bunch, they throw hands some more, Ishii asks for more chops, Ishii, uh, Moose hits Ishii with a drop kick right to the forehead, <laughs> uh, then a delayed drop kick in the corner, tons of chops between the two of them, Ishii hits a suplex, they beat the crap out of each other some more, Moose hits a power bomb for a two count, a drop kick to the face, and then a choke bomb for a two count. They beat the crap out of each other some more. They headbutt each other. Ishii turns Moose inside out with a lariat for a two count. Moose hits a massive Uranagi. And then Ishii comes back with an Insiguri, a sliding lariat. And then Ishii powers him up and hits the vertical drop brain buster to Moose. And gets the victory. This was just two guys running into each other. And Ishii fighting like he was a foot and a half taller than he is. Yeah, this ruled. Um, Moose, I think his... Uh, I don't know. I I don't know. I think maybe his contract status is a little bit in a gray area now. He is still working Impact. But I don't know if he's still under a deal there. I think this looks like a guy who, you know, wa wants to be, wa wants to kind of, because he, he's he's not a guy who seems to want to be stagnant in his career. Like, he came up, he did indies, and then he did, like, he did Ring of Honor for, you know, a three-year contract, and did Impact for a three-year contract, and apparently you know WWE isn't isn't interested i don't know if AEW would be interested but i'm know, looking guy. i'm looking according to Meltzer on may 21st this year he signed a new contract with impact okay so he did sign a new contract well uh, even considering giving the the state of working relationships uh moose in new japan is something that i am very not opposed to Yes, because he would be, I mean, he'd be definitely on the biggest side of, <laughs> of think, the wrestlers. Like, a, a lot of people don't remember this, but he had a match with Okada on a Ring of Honor pay-per-view like six years ago, and it was fucking great. Uh, I mean, I know, like, Okada's great, obviously, but, like, that was a really great match. 
All right, then we move on to a surprise of the evening. Before the match, uh, before the next match uh, comes out, we end up getting Will Ospreay's music hits. And uh, Will Ospreay makes his way out to the ring and grabs a microphone. And he says, as much as I'd like to say I'm happy to be here, I'd be fucked to be here. (laughs) (laughs) Uh... I'm here to speak to the office, not all of you. I'm medically cleared. And isn't there a tournament coming up soon? Ah, oh, yes, the G1. But Will Ospreay will not be in the G1. I'm not going to back to Japan at all. When I worked my ass off to make New Japan watchable, I broke my neck for that company. And uh, the I only needed four months off, and they stripped me of the title. John Moxley, he didn't defend the belt for over a year, and they didn't strip him. Japan, you want me back so bad, I want one thing. He calls Shingo Takagi a pussy, and then he calls the championship a fake champion. It should be interim in front of that, and you all want to know who the real champion is. He pulls out the world heavyweight title belt and he alludes that he's going to go wherever he wants, whenever he wants. He is going to make his new home at New Japan Strong. He says no one cares about the LA Dojo, so he's going to fix that. Connors and Fredericks, they walk out and um, says Shibata can't hold a candle to him. TJP comes out as well and (laughs) calls him a babysitter. And um, then he, uh, Osprey stares down with TJP and they talk and um, TJP turns around to calm down Connors and Fredericks and Osprey makes a, makes a move uh, to sort of like deke him a little bit and then bails. So Osprey healing it up. Yeah. And uh, the, I, I guess he wrestled uh, Doug Williams over the weekend. I didn't see anything about how that goes. But uh, yeah, so I guess he's uh, going to be one of those guys who's going to be U.S. based for a while. And I, don't know, I assume that like these guys that aren't going to do the G1, like at least they'll, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're hoping that things will be better by time for Wrestle Kingdom. Oh, there's something we haven't talked about that I had, I didn't realize until I was listening to uh, uh, Fumi Saito, who, if you don't know, it's basically like the Japanese Dave Meltzer. Mm-hmm. Um, he was so at, at the end of you know, baseball season, which I don't know what baseball season ends. I guess it's probably around this time or next month or so. Uh, they are going to be renovating the Tokyo Dome, and it is not going to be available uh, January fourth, which means Wrestle Kingdom is going to happen somewhere else, and maybe that's. Uh, you know, maybe that's uh, what they're trying out the Seibu Dome for. I don't know. But anyway, the point is, um, may or may not be a, a Tokyo Dome show next year. And these guys, like, I don't know, are they... It's just so frustrating because, like, I, when this fucking pandemic started a year and a half ago, like, I did not imagine that we would still be this clueless about when, you know, that that stuff was still going to be so fucked up this far into it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, there's a lot of question marks about what's going to happen with, you know, international travel and Japanese wrestling over the next, who the, who the fuck knows how long this shit's going to last. Uh, looking out, the Japanese baseball season runs to the end, oh, to November 21st this year. Oh. So that's even later than American baseball. Yeah. They, they must have more days off between games because they only play 143 games where uh, American MLB plays 162, and that's from April 1st to, like, the end of September. So 
Anywho, um, Jay in the chat says she thinks TJP will join Offspray. You know, that would work. Says he's swarmy, en- or swarmy enough to think he's better than everyone and would fit in with Osprey. Plus, Osprey needs a friend over here now. He's a really good wrestler and a shithead. He fits in perfectly with Will Osprey. There you go. Next up, we had the Good Brothers versus John Maxley and a mystery partner. And that mystery partner turns out to be Yuji Nagata. Um, so this was a fun but relatively short match. Anderson and Moxley start it off. We get strikes back and forth. Moxley tries to hook the Death Rider, but Anderson bails. Gallows tags in, drops Moxley with a punch. Nagata wants in. So Nagata kicks Gallows in the leg leg a few times. And then fireworks start going off in the city. <laughs> <laughs> and you see half the crowd turning to watch the fireworks instead of the match. Uh, Gallows beats down Nagata in the corner. Anderson tags in and um, does the same thing. And then Gallows tags back in. And then he's like, all right, screw this. I'm grabbing a headlock and waiting for the damn fireworks to stop. Um, so that happens. Nagata hits a drop kick to the knee. Gallows and Nagata both tag out. So Moxley in, hits a shotgun drop kick, and then a dive. And then he throws a uh, chair at Anderson and then hits Gallows with a chair. I'm um, not sure how this is not a disqualification. I didn't see the ref getting pulled, but I didn't see the ref, so I wasn't sure. Uh, suplex is all around. Release suplex for two. Moxley hits a pile driver for two. Double clothesline. Nagata tags in. He hits a running boot to Anderson. Gallows runs in, and Nagata hits him with an exploder. Puts on the Nagata lock on Anderson, and uh, Moxley, he sets a chair up on the outside. Good Brothers end up hitting Moxley with a magic killer, though, on the floor. And Nagata fights out of a magic killer attempt, hits both guys with kicks, but it does not last long because the Good Brothers do end up hitting magic killer on Nagata and getting the win. Yeah, um, I just... Good for the people who went there to New Japan and got Yuji Nagata as a surprise. That was awesome. I... I don't think I, yeah, because I don't think he was on the the G one show that I went to, so I don't think I've ever seen the guy alive. Yeah, I'm not. But yeah, I this see was him on my show. This was a match, and the yeah, guys won, <laughs> and there we go. Uh, Good Brothers try to cut a promo, but the mic goes out, and they can't get him a working one. But Anderson did get out before it goes out that the. Uh, uh, that it's uh, the elite and the good brothers uh, that uh, get all the people in the seat, in their seats. And uh, then G.O.D. come out and they get in the ring. They yell at each other. Good brothers bail. Yeah. So um, and judging from, you know, Twitter and whatnot, this is going to be uh, th- th- this has been a feud that they've kind of been subtly building like on Twitter and judging from Twitter and Scott Demore's tweets, this is going to be a feud that will uh, overlap between New Japan and Impact, which is fun. Then we have David Finley challenging Jay White for the Never Open Weight Championship. These two were young lions together, and David Finley's record against Jay White is very poor. Uh, He's won. He 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 won. He's beat him twice. He beat him the first time they wrestled with Young Lions, and then he beat him in the New Japan Cup. So I think it's like 13-2 and two or something. Yeah, it's like 12-2 or two or 13-2. and two. Uh, White tries to escape Finley a few times. Uh, they exchange some chops. Finley's dropped onto the apron on the outside. Uh, White attacks the back. Uh, White firmly in control for a while until it goes outside and Finley runs White into the edge of the ring a couple times. 
Back into the ring, he hits a flying uppercut, cross body to the floor when he when Jay Wright rolls out. Another flying uppercut back into the ring for a two. White hits a DDT, drops Finley on the top rope, hits a blade buster for a two. Finley hits a massive uppercut. The ref has to pull him off after a bunch of strikes. Uh, they fight out on the apron. They tease a suplex to the floor, but it doesn't happen. Uh, both of them get down to the floor. And Finley drops Jay White on the apron. Uh, they get back into the ring. Jay White gives Finley a backdrop out of the ring. Finley clipped the edge with his back on the way down. So that probably did not tickle. Uh, we get a Uranagi for a two count when he gets back into the ring. White tries to hit Finley with something off the top. But Finley fights out and Finley hits a... or. Yeah, uh, Finley hits a superplex. They exchange forearms. White falls out of the ring. White gets back into the ring and hits Finley with a forearm and then a massive lariat. Uh, Finley um, answers uh, with something. I don't know what. He hit something, but I... I missed the word. I have a sentence that just dies here. Um, uh, White hits a flat liner and then a suplex. Finley hits a uh, two blue thunder bombs for a two count. Uh, gets on the cross face, moves it into the STF, and then a label lock. And then White barely makes it to the ropes. Uh, White uh, pushes down the or pushes Finley towards the ref, and when the ref turns his back, gives Finley a low blow. The ref asks if he low blowed Finley, and White then pushes the ref away. So Finley hits a low blow to Jay White, because what's fair is fair. And then uh, hits a last shot. Jay White kicks out, and White hits a sleeper suplex. Finley hits a stunner. Can't hit the acid drop, and Finley tries to roll up Jay White out of a blade buster. Um, two half and half suplexes from Finley. The crowd is clearly behind Jay White, though. Uh, White blocks the acid drop again, hits Blade Runner, and gets the pin. Yeah, this was cool. Uh, crowd was very pro Switchblade, and uh, so I think it, David Finley's kind of in the news. He's he heavily indicated that like. He's a guy who who would rather be in, you know, that place, and just like the guy is, has the right to do what he wants with his life, but knowing that he would rather be in that place than in the best wrestling company on earth makes me far less interested in him, and I think a lot of other people felt that way too. Yeah, pretty much the shine is off David Finley at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, post match, Ishii comes out. Uh, White yells, I I've already beaten you. No more. I already fucking beat you, and I can easily do it again. No, get out of here. Uh, he calls Ishii a undersized little bitch, and all that matters is wins and championships. I've won them all the U.S. championship, the Intercontinental championship, and he asks, Hey, Kevin Kelly, uh, Ishii, has he done that? No? All right, and he surely hasn't won the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. I'm the greatest asset in pro wrestling. I sold out Madison Square Garden. I'm the only Grand Slam champion. I'm the real belt collector. Uh, don't matter if it's New Japan ring or an Impact ring or an AEW ring. I'll show up anywhere and rob them of all their prizes. It doesn't matter what company. It is still my new era. And he remained the only Grand Slam champion uh, for about another 20 minutes. Yep, I was, I was going to mention that <laughs> at the end of the next match. Um, <laughs> so we, uh, um, and I have to say, uh, Jay White is awesome and his yes. promos are great. <laughs> yes, he is. He is great. So we move on. Hiroshi Tanahashi challenging Lance Archer for the IWGP US Heavyweight Championship. Uh, we get, uh, why did I, oh, oh, we get classic Lance Archer in New Japan. He punches yes. out four young boys on his way out to the ring. <laughs> love it. Love it. He was just like, I miss, like, I'm glad and I like what he does in AEW, but I miss him in New Japan. Like 
He like finally like turned it up a notch and found his his Bruiser Brody mode. It, it wasn't in Japan anymore, and I just I was so happy to see it here. He like you can tell that like still they have you know a whole lot of confidence in Archer, especially having him in this position. Uh, I appreciate that like. And, and this just shows you that Suzuki Goon is better than Bullet Club because all of this, like people leaving and they're not in Bullet Club anymore, everybody just accepts that Lance Archer is still a part of Suzuki Goon <laughs> and still like clearly to be in this position is somebody that New Japan respects and trusts and deservedly so because he is awesome and this match was awesome. Uh, Tanahashi is thrown out of the ring right away a few times. Uh, Tanahashi tries to lift Archer, but he can't. Uh, so then he's like, all right, I'm going to attack the knee. They show Moxley sitting at the timekeeper's table, uh, watching on, drinking a beer. And uh, Archer hits a cannonball off the apron to the floor. Runs Tanahashi into the barricade. They fight on the outside for a bit. Archer runs over Tanahashi with a shoulder tackle. Some massive strikes. Running elbow in the corner. Archer uh, toys with the timekeeper. And Tanahashi tries a bunch of chops. And Archer yells, hit me, motherfucker! (laughs) Uh, And then he yells, hey, when's uh, when's his flight back to Tokyo? Because he's not going to make it! (laughs) Uh, Archer chases off the ref, uh, which ge- and then gives Tanahashi a kick in the ass, and then Tanahashi catches a kick, hits a dragon screw, somersault senton for a two, and then he hits the uh, hits the ropes, but Archer hits a big boot. Uh, Archer hits a choke slam on the apron. He does the rope walk moonsault press for a two. Archer hits a blackout but is too close to the ropes and Tanahashi gets his leg on the rope. Archer goes up for to, to for another one, but Tanahashi turns it into a sling blade and we double down. Once they get up, they start throwing forearms. Tanahashi hits a sling blade, a twist and shout, another sling blade for a two count. Archer removes a corner pad. He goes outside, grabs a chair, wedges it into the corner, but it ends up backfiring as he's the one sent into a chair. Uh, We get a black hole slam for a two count. Archer sets Tanahashi up on the top rope. They fight up top. Lance gets staggered back. So Tanahashi hits aces high, then hits a high fly flow to the back, high fly flow to the front, and pins Lance Archer to become the new IWGP US Heavyweight Champion and the second Grand Slam Champion. Yeah, I don't know what to add except that this match was great, and if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. Uh, They showed Moxley was all pissed off about the outcome. He walks out. And Archer talks up Tanahashi, says that he is the ace of New Japan. And he, every time that they've wrestled, I've always had fun beating the hell out of you, but I respect you. And I'm glad you came to Los Angeles. And now I want you to come to AEW. I want a rematch, not a year from now, but the next time you show up in All Elite Wrestling. And Tanahashi thanks the crowd, does mayor guitar, and sends the crowd home happy. Indeed. Yeah, um, you know, this match was awesome, and Tanahashi, you know, doing Tanahashi things, always wonderful to see. That's it? That's it. <laughs> That's it. Uh, yeah, I, well, I, I was, I was you, you're, you're the play-by-play guy, I was waiting to see if you were going to pick up. So, yeah, the, the main thing that came out of this is that uh, in his post-match comments uh Tanahashi so what it seems like has happened is that uh originally the plan was for uh, like we've been saying was for Tanahashi to wrestle Moxley at uh All Out uh I think they probably decided oh we have stadium shows and we need a main event and we need Tanahashi on that show which uh (laughs) <laughs> that uh, the the same weekend is all out, and given you know time and space and 
travel restrictions is impossible, so... Technically, he could happen. make it. Because if he has the match on September 4th at night, that is technically... By the time the match is over, it will only be like... 7 o'clock in the morning Pacific time on Saturday morning. So he could fly over. He'd have, he'd have like 36 hours to make it to... Uh, to to all out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he, think that's he could make it, but I don't think he's going to. And, uh, and yeah. I th I think what they wanted to do was not for him not to lose the championship right away. And yeah, I, they didn't want to beat Moxley either. So. Yeah, and I think that since the never title is uh, uh, U.S. bound for the time being. Uh, is they thought they needed uh, the U.S. title in Japan, which is backwards, but whatever. Right. And so it, so what it comes down to is that uh, he made the challenge for his first title defense uh, at the MetLife Dome. Uh, he wants to wrestle the returning Kota Ibushi. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that is going to be the main event of uh, night one of uh, Wrestle Grand Slam at MetLife Dome. Yeah, so we have, uh, for the first night, what we have scheduled so far is a no DQ I quit match between Chase Owens and Toriano for the KOPW 2021 Provisional Championship. We have Kota Ibushi challenging Tanahashi for the U.S. Championship, and then we have a special 60-minute time limit match between Jeff Cobb and Okada. Uh, that should be a fun one. Didn't we just see yeah. that match, though? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then on night two, we have Shingo versus Evil. I could not care less about that match. Uh, and then we have a three, a rare three-way, and make it even more rare, is that it's for a tag team championship match in New Japan. So we have the Dangerous Techers defending their championship against the teams of Sonata and Naito, and the team of Yoshihashi and Hiroki Goto. Um, so that is going to be an interesting match. And then we have what I think should be the main event of the evening. That is Robbie Eagles and Hiromu Takahashi for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match. Dude, two weekends from now, we are going to be so fucking spot. <laughs> I know. We got, we're going to do Dynamite on Wednesday. Then we have Rampage Friday. We have MetLife Dome on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we have another MetLife Dome and then All Out. So there yeah, is a lot of I, wrestling to watch in our wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah, I am just, I'm just really grateful that this week all we had was uh, Rampage on Friday. And then there was no other professional wrestling for the rest of the weekend. So we were able to charge yeah there aren't even cards for the show in japan that's taking place in like 36 hours are there uh, for the for, uh, yeah for tuesday's show nothing nothing even uh announced apparently uh hiromu is wrestling a singles match with doki and you know i'm into that that's my shit all right uh, anything else you want to touch on before we wrap it up? I'm not sure when we will be back for... I'm guessing after the Dome shows is when we'll be back for New Japan coverage, because I don't think there'll be too much happening in the next few days. Yeah, ain't, ain't nothing gonna happen on those, those house shows this week. Uh, that same old. Follow me on Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, Substack, at Wrestleism, and yeah, that's all. All right, so uh, thanks everybody for listening to the That's Wrestling podcast. If you're listening to this as a podcast, we do this show live on Twitch and on YouTube, so you can follow the links in the show notes for those. Uh, you can follow us at That's Wrestling One with the number one at the end on Twitter. You can follow Trey at Wrestleism on Twitter. Uh, you can send a comment, question, feedback to Eric at That's Wrestling .com if you want to go that way. And you can come hang out in our Discord. The link is in the show notes for that as well. So for Trey, my name is Eric. You've been watching and listening to That's Wrestling. See you later, guys. <laughs>